You're watching The Alex Simmons Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. November's a busy time for the Memphis women's basketball team, but we still want you to know your coaching staff. It's time for Tiger Backstories on The Alex Simmons Show. The game is on. The Alex Simmons Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And by Simmons Bank, the official sponsor of women's athletics. Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of The Alex Simmons Show after we've had that glorious Thanksgiving feast. I'm Dave Velocian. And I'm Tyler Springs. We're off and running, but let's meet the coaches. If you're a young basketball player, I mean, you couldn't have a better pedigree. Shelbyville than to go play for the great Pat Summit. I mean, that's incredible. Talk a little bit about growing up there and the influence that Pat might have had on you. Yeah, well, in Shelbyville, you know, my family kind of has a lineage with the girls program there, um, a very long lineage. So it's one of those things where with my height, I don't think I really had a choice but to play basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, we did not have volleyball. Um, my first sport was softball. Um, but, you know, once I went into, once I, I guess everybody figured out that, man, you know, she has potential, uh, my parents sat me, I remember it like it was yesterday, my parents sat me down and said, um, you know, you gotta make a choice, which one is it, softball or basketball? Obviously I chose basketball. Um, you know, I think when you can go into a program led by a Hall of Fame coach and Rick Ensel, you know, so many greats came through there, Tiffany Woosley, Abby Ramsey, and then it's, it's unique that, you know, a lot of those players went to Tennessee or Vanderbilt. Uh, we had players like Ashley Johnson who went to Ole Miss. So it was so many players there, like, you didn't really have to do much convincing to grow up in Shelbyville, and then the next thing you did was you played basketball. Um, going to Tennessee, you know, there were players that came from Shelbyville who went to Tennessee, so that was kind of one of those deals where I wanted to continue the legacy. Um, but playing for Pat, again, somebody who had won national championships, who I believe when I went, came off a championship or a Final Four appearance when I was going into my freshman year. Um, and then the players that I played with um, who were with me for four years, um, Candace Parker, Alexis mm -hmm. Hornbuckle, Nikki Anasicki, wow. um, Shara Eli, so many players, um, Brittany Jackson, who's also from Tennessee. So, um, you know, being able to be a part of that, you know, you can't get a better experience, especially as a college women's basketball player. So just to clarify, when you say you had all this history with Shelbyville growing up with your family, what was the last age where you actually were allowed to play guard rather than a post? Because I feel like you, you probably recognized early on you yeah. were to play inside. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I was never a guard. Like I, could, I knew I couldn't dribble. Um, I put dribble limits on myself because I was very realistic with how I played basketball. I shot one three in high school. I um, mean, I made it. So I always tell yeah. people I was 100% from the three um, in high school. Um, you know, I had a very, very good AAU coach who brought me in the gym, made me play against, when I was in middle school, he brought me in the gym, um, made me play against the high school girls, um, played AAU obviously for him, Tom Ensel. Um, and he taught me to, he taught me how to shoot. Um, my dad taught me how to shoot. He taught me how to keep the ball high. Um, he taught me just the small aspects of the game and then I learned from my dad, me and my dad were always outside, whether it's cold, hot, whatever, in the driveway, working on my game. So, you know, I think I realized pretty quickly that I was a post player, mainly because I was the biggest one in my class anyways. Um, but, you know, that one three is my like guard-ish moment <laughs> in high school. You talk about growing new coaches because you were invested in as somebody who was an up and coming coach. How do you do that when you go about building a staff and why does that matter to you? Yeah, I think you have to just believe in people. Um, everybody deserves an opportunity if you're working hard. Um, you know, I, I have taken a chance and I probably do have one of the youngest staffs in the country, including myself. Um, but again, I don't think there's anything that they're not ready for. Um, I'm a head coach that will throw you in the fire before I'll ever break anything down. Um, Cause I think you have to learn in the hard things before you can ever get really, really good and master 
um, all the all the little things. So um, I think it's just a matter of believing in people. It's a matter of believing in myself and um, my craft and how I study and how I got here. Somebody believed in me, so it was only right for me to believe in Harlan Whitney, Nadiria, Kiki, um, Shelby, LaCaitlin, Coach Coop. He's been in the game um, as long as I have. Um, he, he's, he's a He's a very, very seasoned coach. Um, so he and I, you know, we kind of have to lead this group, but you know, so far they've done a great job of just being committed to the program and committed to themselves as a coach, which is hard um, when you start out pretty young in the business. Josh Cooper would almost never coached with Alex Simmons. In fact, he almost never coached women's basketball at all. But here he is in a role he initially passed up, having a lot of fun. Coop, you uh, have been, I think this is school number seven. You have been around, including your alma mater, which is where you said you got started at Tennessee State. So do you take bits and pieces from everywhere you've been as you really kind of mesh your own career? Yeah, I do. Uh, every head coach that I work for, um, I've had the opportunity, you know, to take some bits and pieces and kind of add them uh, into my day-to-day -day and how I do things and, and see things and different things I can bring to the table and add value. I'm, I'm big on adding value. And I try to just always learn. Even this morning, I was over watching Penny and the men practice, and I had my notepad and just stealing different drills. So every day, I'm always trying to learn from other coaches just ways to get better at my craft. You played overseas as pro. How did that experience inform the way you coach these kids and what you want to make of their experience? It's a good experience playing. I try not to, you know, bring that into the fold so much. Just I had my day, you know, this is their day. Um, I've had my time, but I kind of take those experiences in kind of similar to the way that I coach. I'm not a, I'd say I'm more of a player's coach, you know, over in Europe and things like that, coaches aren't. Um, well, the coaches that I had aren't as hard on players. They understand it's a business aspect. So as long as the players are doing what they're supposed to do, I don't really bother them much. You know, as long as they're getting in the gym, we're working on our craft, we're getting better each day. Uh, that's really uh, how I look at it. The first time Alex Simmons asked you to be an assistant coach with her, you said no. Obviously, something's changed since then, but tell us a little bit why that happened. I've known Alex uh, for a very long time and, you know, I kind of moved around a little bit and I was in a place that I was comfortable in and went through, you know, I worked for another former lady ball, Samika Randall. And I just, you know, I, I did say no, but after I thought about it and I said, man, they've been beating up on us the last two or three years and I know they got a good team. Uh, Thought about it, about 10 minutes later, I called her back. I said, hey, coach, that offer's still on the table? And uh, things kind of went from there. So I did tell her no at first. You guys have been as a group now together for a, a little bit. Is is there different roles each coach plays? Yeah, yeah, each coach, you know, has, uh, has different roles. Uh, I think I'm kind of a basketball guy. I kind of like to watch film and, and watch other, other programs and watch pro games and if I see something, um, you know, I get that one-on-one -on -one time with coach and say, hey, let's look at this. I think this, uh, we could screen here or do this to might, you know, help us score more points or offensively, defensively. Uh, try to assist her in that way and just try to add value. You know, I kind of, you know, she allows me to kind of be her right-hand man and I just try to uh, support her in any way that I can. Up next, we'll hear from Harlan Wyatt and Whitney Bays on why they decided to join the Memphis staff. You're watching The Alex Simmons Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. A chance meeting between Whitney Bays and Alex Simmons led to Whitney joining Alex's staff. That chance has made all the difference. We've talked about your journey. Tell us a little bit more about it. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town, Huntington, West Virginia. Um, and you didn't it. go to Marshall? <laughs> <laughs> no, kill I'm surprised you? you know who it was. A lot of people don't know. Um, but no, I didn't. But I grew up watching a lot of Marshall. Um, 
going to all of their basketball games. My grandma used to have season tickets, so just being around basketball. My dad actually played there. He played overseas. Um, so yeah, I kind of come from a basketball family that loves sports in general. You weren't star starstruck at all when you started playing pickup with OJ Mayo and the guys at <laughs> Huntington Prep? Really, like I played with guys my whole life. So to me, they were just like my friends at the time. Um, obviously he was a great player. I was really close with his brother. Um, but yeah, just, I still keep in contact with them and just growing up, I feel like they made me a better player. And then two different programs in college, Maryland, Purdue, both great programs. What did you take away from both those? I think, you know, it's interesting that you asked that because when I was at Maryland and at Purdue, they had a different style of play. So, you know, there's some things that you like and then there's some things that you don't like <laughs> that you had to go through, but just like the discipline that we had at Maryland. And then like when I was at Purdue, just the, the spacing and I like, really liked our offenses and that type of thing. Before you knew anything about what Alex did on the floor, something at the Final Four seminar that you were in with her attracted you to her. Tell us about like, meeting Alex for the first time. When I met Alex, it was uh, at the Final Four and she wasn't supposed to speak, but she ended up getting up and speaking um, to a filled room. Uh, and I just was like, I gotta meet this woman. So I went and introduced myself and we just started chit-chatting and then we knew familiar people and then one thing led to another and she ended up hiring me. So it was a blessing for sure. You uh, guys ever play against each other, like in practice? <laughs> no, I wish, uh, but no. I, sometimes I, in practice I get in and just kind of move the ball around, keep them honest in the drills, but no, nah, I'm not playing this. <laughs> So each, each coach like has a role. Coop was telling us about him, film and X's and O's. What would you say your role is on this team? Definitely, I think I'm an energy person, um, bring a lot of energy. Um, I really like film, uh, breaking down film as well. Um, defensively minded, uh, definitely love transition game. So a little bit of everything I feel like is my role. Uh, just whatever is needed, whatever Coach Alex needs assistance with, I try to really, you know, help. For year one, when you look at the schedule that's ahead of you, how do you feel about it? There's a lot of challenging teams on that slate. Yeah, I like that though, you know? Uh, we're not scared of competition. We wanna compete against the best. And then obviously when you have a tough non-conference schedule, it should help you in your conference schedule. Um, so the expectation is high for us. Um, the standard that we hold ourselves to is high. Um, so I'm excited to see how we, we do. Becoming a coach was not Harlan Wyatt's first choice, but being on staff with Alex Simmons, that might've been the path she wanted all along. Coach, not only did you go to Tulane, but I understand really you wanted to be a broadcaster. Is that true? <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh, that was one of my goals. I wanted to be on TV. <laughs> Did they teach that at Tulane? Broadcasting? They, uh, I studied communications, but Coach Stockton actually had a mentor program and she uh, hooked me up with one of the mentor, my mentor was a news anchor for Channel 6 in New Orleans. So um, I got a little bit of experience, got to learn from her. Do you like that side or this side more? Ooh, I don't know. I think I like I, both. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. So what, what made you then go, okay, that kind of fun, but I, I'm really a basketball coach. How did you get to that point? That's a good question. I I love basketball and I didn't want to let it go. Um, so I think I wanted to continue to dedicate my time to becoming a coach just because I feel like it was going to make me better. Um, and I also think being a coach is going to help you add on to my profession in broadcast. But uh, right now I'm really have on my hat to be a coach and I'm focused on trying to win and develop young women and student athletes. Go 
you're the recruiting coordinator for this team. Mm -hmm. When you were recruited, one of your parents knew what the drill was because he'd played a lot of basketball, and one of your parents really didn't. But how does that inform how you do your job today when you go after new kids? Yeah, I think that I had a, a privilege of having my dad who was, a, he was recruited and played at Clemson as a pro. And now that when I talk to parents, that's one of my first questions, like, are you all familiar with the process? Because that process is a lot. And even now from then, the rules have changed. It's a lot more um, that you have to consider, like the transfer portal. Do you want to change schools every other year or you want to stick with the one program? So that's kind of one of the first questions I always ask. And I, I'm here to educate them first and foremost before anything. And of course, try to recruit the best players. Now, the recruiting's the one role that you got, mm -hmm. but game day, what's your role as an assistant when the lights come on? Game day, uh, I like to show no fear. Um, I'm a competitor, I love to win. I always tell the players that I coach, my post coach, that my post players that I want to, whoever we go up against, that the, our posts are the best posts. So um, just instilling that confidence in them and whoever, the person that they're going up against, that they should trust that they have just as much as capability to win and beat them as I believe that they do. You're the youngest coach on the staff. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any hesitation about joining it? Because Coops, two yeah, decades older than you, and, and you know, there's something to, to be said for meshing. Um, I guess I never considered my age uh, something that could hold me back or consider like how good of a coach I could be. So that's not something I consider. I do think it's you just have to learn and I can learn from him and his experience. So I'm, I'm actually appreciative to have someone that is like a veteran and has been through um, a lot of the things that I'm probably already going through and I'm learning all along the way. So I appreciate it actually. Coming up, Coach Alex has her eyes set on December and a tough close to non-conference play. You're watching The Alex Simmons Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Let's take a look at the AutoZone Road Ahead. Coming up, five non-conference games that are really tough, Coach. They are, and you know, being going on the road all the way to Marquette will be something to experience. I've actually never played there before, but I think to end our non-conference season at home against the SEC opponent, um, I think that will be very definitive at that time for our team. Um, being able to play Mississippi State um, right before Christmas, um, kind of testing us as we go into our conference play. When you look at the teams that have been in the NCAA tournament last year that are on this year's schedule, how does that help you prepare for the conference slate? It definitely helps us prepare. I think when you, um, if you go back and look, a lot of the teams that make it to the NCAA tournament the following year, you look at their schedules, they play multiple NCAA um, tournament teams. So, you know, hopefully we're in that same boat, but I think it'll definitely prepare us. Um, it'll expose us just as it should, um, but it'll show us what we need to work on again to go into our conference. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Can't think of a better way to prepare for the conference season with a setup game like that. Back with a wrap in just a minute. You're watching The Alex Simmons Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. It is so much fun to watch everybody come together and mesh. And we'll see more of that as the season goes on next month. The Alex Simmons Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And by Simmons Bank, the official sponsor of women's athletics. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the University of Memphis Sports Network. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.